Okay, let me go through the rest of the techniques for this paper so that you have them as you're working through the paper this weekend. Um, the next technique I want to talk about is Western blotting. So Western blotting is a way to detect proteins. So this is looking at proteins that are expressed in a cell or present in a cell. <clears throat> and the way that uh, Western blotting works is that you isolate cellular proteins. And really all you're doing is harvesting cells and whoops, smushing them up, breaking down the lipids and all of that good stuff. And then you're taking that mix and putting them onto what we call a gel. And I'll talk about gel lactophoresis in a minute. But the gel helps separate proteins out by size. All right, and once you run the gel, you transfer it or you blot it to a membrane. And the membrane is more like a piece of paper. So gels are very fragile and you can't really work with gels very well because they will break and crack and dry out. So we transfer all those proteins that have been separated to a membrane. And then on that membrane, what's specific is that you use antibodies that are specific to whatever protein you're looking at. I put your favorite protein. Okay. And those antibodies will bind to your protein. And then you put on what we call a secondary antibody, something that has a um, some kind of signal that you can detect. So they usually have um, either a color or um, something that makes a, a luminescent um, light that um, x-ray film can pick up. And you get something like this where the bands, okay, so all of these lines are called bands. The bands that you see, you only see the ones that are specific to the protein that you're looking at, okay? So in th reality, there's thousands and thousands of proteins in all of these different sample lanes, okay? Oops. And you only see your specific ones due to the antibody detection. So this is a way, again, to see if the protein you're interested in is being expressed is present in that cell. And so they're gonna do that with Cas9 because Cas9 is an enzyme, which is a protein. So they're gonna make sure the Cas9 is being expressed in the cells. Here's just another picture of a Western blot. And the reason I like this one is it's showing you that there are all these other, all these other proteins on that sample, but the only ones that you see are the ones that the antibody sticks to. Okay, so the antibody allows for visualization, visual of specific proteins. Okay, so remember Western blot proteins. I prefer that Western blot is capitalized. Um, it was actually, uh, well, the story is that the first blotting technique was discovered by Edward Southern. It's called a Southern blot, it's for DNA. And then other people in the community said, ah, oh, let's make fun of him and call him. So we have northern blots and western blots. There are no eastern blots. Um, but anyways, I always capitalize that term. Okay, so gel electrophoresis in general 
is that you take this slab of something that's like thick jello. If you've ever eaten jello, to watch it wiggle. Um, it's this big slab, or auger. If you worked with auger in microbiology, it's kind of like that, okay? It has a chemical composition that allows an electrical current, so electrophoresis is separation with electricity. And the gel is that auger kind of medium. There are other kinds of gels. There are gels made with acrylamide that are actually used for the protein western blots. But the principle is the same. It's separation by size, okay? <clears throat> Smaller things run faster, or they move further down the gel is what we call it. Oh, sorry. Ah, ah, ah. Oops. What did I do? Oh, well, I really skipped. All right, let me take this off. Sorry. Further down the gel. So you can see here's size. <clears throat> so this is DNA. 500 base pairs, 700 base pairs. So you can see th these bands. Remember, these are called bands. Are representing a sample and they run, they move down based on their size. So this guy's big. He's slower than some of these smaller pieces of DNA. And the thicker or fatter or darker the band is tells you there's more, um, in this case, DNA there. Gelolophoresis has uh, is not as quantitative as I'll talk to you about some other uh, methods. But whether it's protein gel electrophoresis or DNA or RNA gel electrophoresis, the idea is the same thing, that you're going to use electricity, you're going to separate things by size. Okay. And now, all right. So, um, another method is PCR, which is, stands for polymerase chain reaction. And all that crazy words means it's a way to amplify or make more of the DNA in this case. If you have RT-PCR, that means you're starting with RNA, you're reverse transcribing it to DNA, and then you're doing PCR. PCR alone implies that you're starting with DNA. And what's cool about this is it's very specific to a small DNA or RNA sequence. Okay. And it's specific because we have something called primers. And primers are really like those guide RNAs we were talking about today. So this primer <clears throat> guides the DNA polymerase as to where to replicate. So you can see Remember, in our uh, natural DNA replication in our cells, you have RNA primers. In the lab, we don't like to work with RNA as much because uh, it breaks down. So we have a DNA primer that starts DNA polymerase. We have one on the opposite strand. It's going that way. And so eventually, we amplify or we make a whole bunch of this very small region. So if this was a big chromosome, you're only going to amplify a little piece, right? You might not even amplify a whole gene. But the idea is you make a whole bunch of this so that we can see it on something like gel electrophoresis, okay? You can't see low number copies. The problem is this is not very quantitative. So if you want to know say how much proviral DNA is there or how much of a gene is being expressed at the RNA level, you need to do something called 
quantitative. Oh, what did I do? It's supposed to be Q. Darn it. Hold on. I gotta put a sticky and fix that. Oops. Q, not P. Q PCR. All right. Come back next year, I'll have it fixed. All right, so the way qPCR works, it's the same idea as PCR, but instead of just looking at um, what you make in the end after amplifying, a qPCR machine, let me write quantitative here, a qPCR machine measures how much DNA you have after every cycle. So in PCR, we do 30 or 40 cycles to get enough DNA to see on a gel. But that doesn't tell me, um, did this sample have more DNA than this sample? Were they the same? So we've they've just, uh, figured out this quantitative PCR method where it measures, and so this is the amount relative fluorescence, so it's all based on fluorescent markers, of each um, different sample and the the machine will do all this fancy math and calculate a threshold threshold that says where all of them are in exponential um, growth so it's two by two by two by two by two everybody's um, being copied um, equally and you come back down and you look at when did this happen at which cycle and so the later the cycle means there was less DNA to start with okay and you can also do this with um, RNA you just trans uh, or tra reverse transcribe the RNA to DNA and then you do the qPCR so it's quantitative um, it can tell you um, relative amounts. Um, so these have more DNA to start with. And these had less DNA to start with. Um, and so the uh, paper um, shows these as bar graphs. Right, so how much you started with and then after treatment, so how much decrease you had. So look for that kind of data. Um, as I mentioned in class, they do a lot of whole genome sequencing. They do this CREST method to look for insertion deletions. Um, they talk about how many times they've covered the genome. Like I said, I don't know all of these different methods, um, but the bottom line is they're reading the DNA sequence over and over again, and a computer program is putting all of this DNA together. So the cool thing about whole genome sequencing is that you are sequencing the entire genome, so all 46 chromosomes in a human cell, um, and then you can compare it to a reference sequence and look for mutations or changes in the DNA sequence, deletions, delete, yeah, it's afternoon, I need to go get lunch, deletions, insertions, all of that kind of stuff. So please don't get bogged down um, in the details of the sequencing. Like I said, Dr. Miller is awesome. If you need more explanation, but as you're looking at um, figures three and um, uh, I would say 4E, I'm just looking through the paper really quick. Um, Yeah, pretty much there, 3 and 4E. Um, 
there's a lot of data just looking at where the CRISP, uh, CRISPR-Cas9 system is cutting, what's happening to the DNA when it rejoins. Um, we're not going to get bogged down in that. Um, what we're interested in is, is this working and is it um, getting rid of the HIV? Okay. And last 